Hi everyone, my name is Rida from Rida Knowledge channel. Our today's topic is the hydrochloric acid secretion mechanism and I'm going to take you through the four steps that will lead eventually to the formation of the hydrochloric acid in the luminal side. So we are going through the first step, water dissociation. Water simply splits into hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions. And I want to stress that the hydrogen ions which are coming from the water dissociation are the main source of hydrogen ions in the luminal side. Then the hydrogen ions are going through the canalicular systems in exchange for potassium ions through the proton pump or the hydrogen potassium pump. Now we have our hydrogen ions in the luminal side and we have a hydroxyl ions inside the parietal cells but not for a long time. So the step number two, the formation of bicarbonate ions. Those ions are a product of a reaction uh, involving the carbon dioxide and water inside the cell. So basically the carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood vessel into the cell and then combines with water in a reaction catalyzed by a carbonic anhydrase enzyme to form carbonic acid H2CO3. Then the carbonic acid is quickly going to dissolve into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. The bicarbonate is going to get outside of the cell in exchange for what we will know in a little bit, but the hydrogen ions are going to neutralize the hydroxyl ions from the previous reaction, as we know. And then we are going to the next reaction. So step three. In this step, we will have our chloride ions being shifted from the blood vessel into the luminal side. And we know that the chloride is the second ingredient in our recipe. So now we have a chloride being exchanged with uh, the bicarbonate through a chloride bicarbonate antipode. And then we will have our chloride ions being pumped through passive transport through the canalicular system into the luminal side. Meanwhile, the sodium is being pumped into the cell and from the cell into the blood in exchange for potassium. So basically, the chloride being pumped into the luminal side and the sodium being pumped into the the cell and this will create a negative charge in the luminal side that will attract uh, the potassium through the canalicular system uh, into the luminal side and we know that the potassium from the lumen is going to get into the cell again in exchange for hydrogen and then we will have our HCl in the luminal side So, step four, the final step, which is involving the movement of water from the blood vessel and into the luminal side due to osmotic gradient created by the highly osmotic active hydrogen ions. So, simply that was the four steps that leads eventually to the formation of the hydrochloric acid. In summary, we get the hydrogen ions from the water dissociation correct and we get the chloride in exchange for bicarbonate which comes from the reaction catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase enzyme correct and then the chloride is being pumped into the lumen the hydrogen ions being pumped into the lumen in exchange for potassium through the hydrogen potassium pump and we had the hydrogen and the chloride when they combine they form HCl so simple isn't it? So now I'm going to talk to you about the phenomena called alkaline tide or postprandial alkaline tide, which means that when the sodium is exchanged for potassium and the bicarbonate for chloride, they meet in the blood vessel to form sodium bicarbonate, which is going to increase the plasma pH from 7.4 into 7.45. So an slight increase in the pH of the plasma 
post-brand deal due to uh, the formation of uh, the hydrochloric acid on the other side in the stomach the sodium bicarbonate is being formed in the blood and so postprandial alkalinitis a slight increase in the pH postprandial or due to the form this will help to maintain the pH inside the parietal cells If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe and share and stay tuned for our next video.